Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and I have another post-release video for you. Again, based on social media questions and feedback, uh, again, either uh, YouTube, Facebook, Discord, what have you. And this time, we're gonna talk about a Vortex Ring State, or VRS, and settling with power, where many of you guys will be in very slow speed flight or in a hover, and then, you know, as you're descending, you know, all of a sudden you find yourself crashing into the ground. So we're gonna talk about that a bit. But before we get into that, I have a couple quick uh, PSAs, again, based on some of our social media feedback and questions. First, let's bring up the controls indicator by going right control and enter. And you'll see up on my indicator, my cyclic is a bit uh, defaulted by down and to the left. But more importantly, you can take a look at my anti-torque pedals that are way off to the uh, left. So if I were to pull collective right now, it would uh, yaw off. So to remedy that, when you first enter a mission and if you have this issue, just move your controller back and forth for a quick second, move the cyclic for a quick second, and you should be golden. Take that off. Next, let's jump into the uh, CPG seat. And I'm going to set the TADS as my site. So of course now we have our TADS up on the HDU. And for night missions, I really enjoy having it there. But during the day, I personally prefer to have it on the uh, TDU up here on the TDAC display. So a question I see a lot is, well, Wags, how do I get rid of the TADS up on the HDU? So there's two ways we can do that. One, we can hit the I key on the keyboard to actually get rid of the I heads altogether. Or again, up on the TDAC, we have the level knob. Just rotate that counterclockwise to zero and you're good. Uh, no more, no longer video, but we still have the symbology and we have the monocle. Let's go back to the pilot seat now. So let's spend a minute now and talk about different things that can have demands on the engines. Uh, the first is the gross weight of the aircraft. So in this case, I have a uh, full fuel. I've got 16 Hellfires on the wing and I've got the mast mounted radar. So this is a, uh, a super heavy bird. It's also 41 degrees uh, Celsius outside. And the higher the temperature, uh, the greater the demands on the engines. And finally, I'm here in the Nevada map. So we're over 6,000 feet MSL. And the higher the MSL, again, uh, the greater demands on the engines are going to be made. And what we're going to see is as I start to uh, pull pitch, even getting to like around a five foot hover, it's going to demand quite a bit of torque. And eventually, I'm going to over torque the engines. And when that happens, uh, basically the rotors are trying to bite so much into the wind to generate that torque and lift, it's actually going to slow down the main rotor RPM. And we're going to start to uh, hear that low uh, RPM warning. And the best way to get rid of that is not to over torque it to begin with. So that's a lot of words. Let's take a look at this in operation. You're already taking a lot more torque to get up. Oh, she's a heavy bird. A little squirrely too. See, we're already at 80% torque, and we're only four feet. Gonna keep bringing her up. See, our EGT is already in the yellow at 860 something. Continuing to pull collective. Eight feet. 90% torque. Okay, now I've over torqued. I've lost RPM and I'm coming down. So again, you want to watch that torque value to not over torque it. And again, that's based on your weight, the OAT, and your MSL. Okay, I've now jumped into a different aircraft with a, uh, a much more appropriate loading for the environmentals here. And the first condition we're going to talk about is the uh, Vortex or Ring State uh, VRS, which uh, unfortunately gets a bad rap that most people who have a uh, loss of uh, power or crash in the ground uh, blame VRS, which actually most of the time it's not, which I'll talk about here in a second. 
But uh, for VRS, you have to have three conditions all happening at the same time. You have to have a relatively low forward airspeed or ETL, uh, somewhere below 24 to 16 uh, knots. You have to have a descent rate greater than 300 uh, feet per minute, which you can see here on the VVI on the right side of the uh, HDU. And you're also going to have to have insufficient collective power. Now, there's a lot that actually goes into this, which I'm not going to try to explain here today. But I will leave it to my friend uh, Casmo and his uh, magic whiteboard to uh, discuss that in detail in his video later on. So now, let's spend a few minutes talking about settling with power. And from what I'm reading, this is actually what most people are running into rather than VRS. In a nutshell, we're asking the aircraft to deliver more lift than it can provide. And just like VRS though, this is going to happen when you have a very low ETL, uh, slow speed, or in a hover, and you really let your uh, VVI or vertical velocity get out of control. Now, often when I see people running into this is if they're uh, dashing ahead and they uh, zero out the collective, yank back on the stick, slow down very rapidly. What will happen is they'll let that VVI get way out of control. And as they start to descend, uh, essentially there's not enough uh, torque and lift to arrest that descent. And next thing they know, they're sitting on the ground. So let's take a look at that in operation. Again, though, uh, we have a lighter bird but still hot out and we're still at a very high MSL so we're gonna have uh, a lot of demands on the engines. I'm gonna get up to you know, between 150, 200 feet uh, well outside of in-ground effect, be well into OGE or outside of ground effect and just review uh, in-ground effect, you'll have a lot more lift and that's uh, from 48 feet and down and from 48 to one, uh, the lower you go, you know, the greater uh, effect you'll have in terms of generating lift. So taking it pretty slow. Again, we're not, uh, we're already at 101% uh, percent on the torque, but because we're so light this time, we're not riding into the low RPM like we did last time. Okay, 150. Okay, and as I zero out my collective, you're going to see the uh, nose swing because uh, the yaw demands changed quite a bit. Okay, so I'm going to zero out. Bring back the collective. What? Oh, no. Can't do it. And we're down. Now, the way to get out of that is if you have enough altitude and you can get the nose down, get some forward airspeed, some ETL, and hopefully you can fly out of it. But of course, you know, the biggest way to avoid that is not to get into that condition to begin with. And what I mean by that is really keep a close eye on your vertical velocity indicator here on the right side of the HDU and don't let this go, say, between 300 to 500 feet per minute. Uh, if it gets out of uh, too far out of control, uh, you're going to have a bad day. Anyhow, folks, I very much hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.